When I last worked on it, I had some nicely animated coins that were loaded off data files on disk, but poor Scarfy couldn't collect them because that code hadn't been written yet. All he could do was push them around and basically push them off the cliff, which, you know, fun for a minute or two. So today, let's finally add the code, the interaction code to allow Scarfy to collect the coins with a satisfying click sound. Let's get started. So how do we make objects interact beyond the basic physics simulation? The key is this physics object contact handler callback. So the physics uh, engine has the option to call something every time one object touches another or stops touching another. So that's our, that's our way into to interaction. Now, you'd think because Scarfy is the one collecting coins that it's the most logical thing to do would be to add contact handler to Scarfy. Uh, however, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to add the contact handler to the collectible class. And the reason for that is if you add it to Scarfy, Scarfy is going to be interacting, being the player. It's going to be, he's going to be interacting with a lot of different kind of objects. So then the the contact handler callback is going to have to check, uh, am I dealing with a collectible? Am I dealing with uh, an enemy, with this, with that? There are, there are ways to do that efficiently. But seeing as we're using C++ and object oriented programming is available, why not just get the collectible to do it? The collectible knows that it's a collectible object, so it can. the contact handler can say, OK, have we touched an actor? Let's ask, if so, let's ask the actor Collect me if you can. And here's the code that does that. Here you see the, the collectible touched callback. First it checks if the other object has a physics object attached to it, because not all objects need to interact with other objects. Then this object is obviously this collectible, so we know that we can do a static cast. Um, we get the actor from the other object. If there is an actor, then we say, collect me if you can. And obviously, in order to do that, we have to have a collect function that will say, if this collectible is available to be collected, then we change the state to collecting, which will change it from the default spinning animation to a collect animation, if it exists. If there's a collect sound, that satisfying clink, to let you know you've, you've collected it, uh, play that sound, and then return the value of this collectible. Because, you know, you might say a gold coin is worth less than a large precious gem, for example. Uh, we're creating collectibles for them to either use as, either use as a score or as a currency. Now, obviously, that's not enough. When I first tested the code, I wrote the code, I thought, okay, yes, it's going to work. And I was shocked to see Scarfy was still just pushing the coins around. And the reason was I had forgotten with Scarfy. Where is Scarfy? Let's bring up the Scarfy code. In the code that creates the physics objects for Scarfy, I had forgotten. Okay, I need to, to find them first. Where did I put that code? All right, the character actor. I put it in the character actor. So in the character actor class, I had forgotten to add physics objects that reference Scuffy or in this case, re reference whatever character actors. It. it doesn't have to be Scarfy. Not only Scarfy can collect coins, maybe there might be a thief or a village idiot or whatever who can also go run around collecting coins in, in competition with you. So I'd forgotten to add that. So then this code, the collectible code, would get to here, say, oh, there's no other actor attached to the object that I touch, so obviously there's nobody to collect me. And then it would stop. So once I had gone to the character actor, fixed that up, and finally, Scarfy could collect the coins. Complete with the sound and disappearing and all that.
running around collecting coins here and clink, clink, clink is, is fun. But how much have you collected? Uh, so I added a display overlay. So in, in true style to try to keep the game engine code separate from the game specific code, I've created a display of overlay class whose only job is to draw over the top of the scene. And once again, to keep it simple, where is the game overlay? There's the game overlay CPP file. It will actually just extract the player from the scene and get its wallet value. So it'll get the wallet value and then it'll print the amount of gold that the player has up in the top right hand corner of the screen using a few simple calculations and the draw text X function. That's enough talk. Let's run it. Let's play. Okay, there's the usual menu. Start. And here we go. There are the coins. Click, click, click. Very satisfying. We're collecting coins. And we can see the tally going up. Starting to feel a bit rich here. There you go. As far as the coin collecting ability is, it's done. Now, if you care about efficiency and performance, then you'll probably look at the code in horror because you see for every coin, for every object, the data files, the images, the animations, the sounds are loaded separately. So for example, 200 coins means that coin animation and the clink sound is loaded 200 times. Uh, clearly a gigantic waste of time. Uh, and indeed, you see when you click the, but the start button, you see the, the delay between the menu screen and, and being able to play the game is getting longer and longer as more and more things are loaded. It's taking more time. Uh, but it's also a gigantic waste of memory to have 200 copies of the exact same thing in there. And sooner or later, lower end computers are going to choke on all that wasted memory. So what's needed is something called a resource manager. However, I think that's enough for today. We'll take care of that some other time. See you later.